And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. This game has the exciting title of Dive, Diver, Die! Um, you don't really die in the game though, so I'm not really sure why that's there. But I guess it works well. Dive, Diver, uh, Die! Unless we're talking about the die that you roll in the game. Hmm. But, be that as it may, this is a game in which players are diving for treasure, and it's kind of like a push-your-luck style game. Because the deeper you go for treasure, the more treasure you possibly have to get, but also the chance that you run out of air, which doesn't kill you, but means you don't get any treasure. And there's different rounds. This is part of a series of games. No, there's not. It's not really. But there's these games that have been coming out lately, especially from smaller publishers, which have some really neat ideas. And I read the rules and I say, wow, that's not a bad idea. I haven't seen that before. And then when it gets into the game itself, it just doesn't work. And this is one of those cases. This game act, this game works, but barely, and it could have been much more. I'll show you why. Let's take a look. I have to give props to this. This is a good theme. It's a, it's a, it's a refreshing theme. The game looks good. I especially like how the board looks. Each of the players is going to have a diver that they're going to have in this boat, and they're going to be diving for a certain amount of treasure. Each turn you'll roll some 10-sided dice to determine how much treasure made up of all these coins is going to be on the board. There's going to be bonus treasure on the bottom spaces, so going down there. Each player starts with these cards here. These cards are numbered from 1 to 10, and each player gets... 1 to 10, although two of them are randomly taken and put aside, which I think is a really dumb rule. Honestly, because, yes, it adds some uh, randomness to the game, but if you t take my 9 and 10, that's just not as fair as the guy who lost his 1 and 2. It really isn't. But be that as it may, at the beginning of each round, after we put the treasure out, players are going to donate one of these cards to the shared air pool. Basically, we're going to add all these together to see how much oxygen players start with. Well, you, you start with the amount on one of these oxygenator cards. Players also get a random event card that's going to allow them to do something during the course of the game. Players will then pick another card and say how many, uh, let's say they pick this card here, how, much, how long duration they're going to spend looking for treasure. And then off the players jump from the boat. Players are going to put you know, somewhere on here that they're going, to, they're going to tell everyone what depth they're going to. So let's say I'm going to depth 5. On my turn, I roll the die as I go down, and it says minus 3. So we actually lose 3 oxygen. Or it could say minus 2, plus 1, minus 1, 0. But you can see most of it's negative, so the oxygen will go down. If the oxygen ever gets a 0, we'll turn over the top player card of the shared air and add that amount to it and keep going. Everyone is using the same air, so eventually it's going to run out. But once you get to your depth, you then will spend that as many turns as you said you would down there collecting treasure. And each turn, rolling the die to see what happens. When you collect treasure here, you're collecting 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, and 10. Let's say there's 45 treasure. Nine turns here is going to clear it out. Well, up here you could technically spend 45 turns. You won't. Once you've finished your turns, you can start going back to the surface. And if you make it back to the boat before the oxygen completely runs out, you're fine. Anybody who does not make it back out before the oxygen completely runs out is not dead, although, I mean, I think the game should have you die, but whatever. They yank you out, but you lose all your treasure, you lose everything that you might have gotten. Now, there are advanced rules where you're searching for a ruby um, in here, but that, that's kind of added in, and like I said, there's bonuses if you go down deep. My problem, one of the problems here with this game, there's a few problems. One is uh, going shallow is not really any point at all. Yes, you get 20 extra gold if you're the only person to survive, but if there's 50 treasure in there and I'm pulling out one every turn, it just doesn't work. So you really have to go down deep. And going down all the way to the 10 gets you that bonus, but very rarely do I see anyone survive there unless there's a ton of air, which happens, or lucky die rolls. And there's just a lot hanging on this die rolls. And sometimes you lose simply because the dice were just incredibly unkind to you. But I don't mind that as much. I mean, that I can live with. What really ruins the game are these event cards. Look, there's Wild D. <laughs> uh, these event cards can completely change it. I played, there's one event card that we played with that once everyone had everything set up, it switched everyone's dive depths. You switched it with another player, which completely made that round absolutely random. And it's just a very frustrating fact. So it's kind of fun. Um, and 
Another minor, minor annoyance is passing this die around. Uh, everyone has to roll it every turn, all the time. And so you just keep passing around, passing around, passing around, passing around, passing around. I roll it. Okay, I pick it up. I roll it. I don't know. It just seems like there could have been a better mechanic than that. Now listen carefully. I don't dislike this game. It's not a bad game. It's just that it didn't live up to what I wanted to in those event cards. I want to kick them out. Now I suppose you could kick them out and play with no event cards. And I would actually be willing to play that again. You would have to talk long and hard to me to get to play with those event cards. Again, I like the theme. It doesn't play as well as it sounds like it's going to play. I don't know how else to describe it than to say, if you played it, you would see. It's not a bad game, but it just sounds cooler than it is. I'm going to go to this step, I'm going to go to this step, but that passing a die around makes what sounds exciting become a little bit mundane. And rolling and rolling and oh, yawn. And as your cards, as the game progresses, your options become less and less. And it's just not as exciting as you might think that it should be. So I'm giving this one a very mediocre rating. I think some people will like it. I think most people will probably not. And I think everybody will be turned off by the event cards, except for the few people who really, really like wild swings of luck in their game. But it is a good theme. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.